church. I always loved church. I, I think I liked the music at church. I liked the people at church. I just love church. When, when I was a kid, we went to church on Sunday morning. We, we, back in the day, we really loved God. We went to church on Sunday night. Anybody remember those days, right? You went to church on the midweek. Maybe it was Wednesday for you. It was Tuesday for us. But between Sunday morning and Sunday night, I didn't want to go home. I wanted to stay at the church because my friends were there. God was there. And I just want to tell you that church is one of the greatest spaces and places for you to receive freedom. I, I love programs such as AA and um, all these other great self-help programs. I think they're great. I think one of the great things about these programs is it allows people who admit that they have the same problem. First of all, that's really cool because most people got a problem. They just won't admit it. I'm going to look at this camera right now and talk to you. How many of y'all got a problem and you're willing to admit it? If you didn't raise your hand, we know you got a big problem. But at AA, they, they talk about, and they're together, and there's community. But the difference between all these great programs, and I love those programs, and churches is that Jesus is actually there being magnified, so his anointing is there. What is the anointing? The, the anointing is the power of God, the tangible presence of God, to remove burdens and to destroy yokes. The church. Some people, though, they don't like to go to church. You know, I, I heard about a guy that his, his mom went in and woke him up. He still lived at home. He was in his mid-20s. And she said, you need to go to church. Come on, Sunday morning. He said, I'm not going to church. I don't like that church. The people don't like me. I don't even like church. She said, well, I'm going to give you a couple reasons why you're going to get to church. Number one, I'm going to church. Number two, I'm your mother. Number three, you're their pastor. Come on, somebody. You, ought to help me. <laughs> you, got, you got to go to church. But you get to go to church. So I, I want to talk about the difference between online, and I love it. People are in the metaverse today. You're on Facebook today. You're, you're wherever you're at. I, I'm not here to make you feel bad about watching online. Not at all. I love it. If you like online, I like online. But there's a significance with actually being in physical proximity. Now, I love my wife, and I, I like to FaceTime her. In fact, our, our grandson, I love to, to see him, and he'll, he'll come up to the camera and FaceTime and just try to kiss you. But I can't physically feel the touch through that transaction. And so why go to church? Well, number one, God's presence is there. I want to put on the screen, number one, God's presence. Shout it with me at all campuses. What's there? God's presence is there. When God's presence is there, and I think possibly... You probably felt it during worship today. And we, we're not moved by what we feel. But how many of y'all know the music was powerful and you could actually feel something? Raise your hand. If you didn't feel something, check yourself. You might be dead. <laughs> so Exodus 25, verse 8, check this out. The Bible says, and let them, talking about people, make me, talking about God, a sanctuary that I may dwell. God dwells in his house. In fact, if you went into any of our campuses today, any demonic activity, first of all, let's, let's get this straight for new people that are here. How many of y'all do believe there is a devil? Raise your hand. How many believe you were married to that, at least a relative of him at one point in your life? Raise your hand. So the devil's real, right? How many of y'all believe that God is real? How many of y'all believe that heaven is real? How many of y'all believe that hell is real? How many of y'all want to play the hokey pokey, put your right foot in and your left foot in? So we, we need to establish the fact that, that God's house is so anointed that the demons that have been stalking you all week, they fought you not to go to church. They told you you're late. You got up too late. You don't need to make that drive. After all, you can just click online and watch it there. Why? Because he knows if you can ever get into God's presence, that his presence will remove the burden, destroy the yoke, and you will get free on Sunday. Somebody ought to shout amen. And you will walk free on Monday because you've been in the presence of God. Come on, give him some rowdy praise, Sunset Weldon. In Matthew 18, 20, check this out. This is New Testament, Matthew 18, 20. It says, for where two or three are gathered, gathered together in my name, I will be there. Talk about God's presence. I will be there in the midst of them. God's there. So cool. Matthew 18, 19, it says, again, I say unto you that if any two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done of the Father which is in heaven. Again, I say unto you, if any two of you agree on earth. When you come into community, the reason why God answers the prayer is because you are in his presence. The Bible also said that in his presence is fullness of joy. 
You can't explain it. You just feel, once you get to church, you're like, oh, thank God I'm here. It may be that you checked your kids in the nursery and you're like, oh, God, at least I got an hour. (laughs) Our church is so awesome because we have multiple services and we've caught people coming to the 9 o'clock, worshiping God, pretending they're staying for the 1140. They go to lunch and come back and get the kid. That is wrong. (laughs) But people still do it. Now, number two is God's power. Put it on the screen. Everybody shout that, God's power. Shout it again, what? God's power. So the the second reason why we want to actually physically go to church is God's power. God God is powerful, by the way. He's unbelievable. In Deuteronomy 32, verse 30, it says, how could one chase 1,000 and two 10,000 to flight? God's power. But, But sometimes people, they... They fail to receive God's presence and God's power because they are not planted. I have a friend here today. His name's Lee Lipton, and and, uh, he's a dear, precious, close friend. I mean, we've been friends for years now, and he owns a restaurant called Benny's on the Beach, and it's phenomenal. If you ever want to feel God in your soul and and you want to have, let's just praise God for French toast, God, and Benny's on the Beach, God, I thank you, Lord. Wow! People in St. Louis... Go on vacation just to come to Benny's on the beach. They don't come down here to hear me preach. They go to get the French toast. I understand that. But when I, I was in his restaurant yesterday, because he owns the one across the way too, and, and I remember when he started the second restaurant that there wasn't much activity, but, but Lee knew if I work, 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 if my presence is there, 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 if I make Dylan be there all the time, if I think about it all the time, he said, it will grow. And then as soon as he started the second one, COVID hit, and everybody's had to stay at home. But then when COVID hit, he figured out that people were addicted to the French toast and they would actually drive up and he could actually ship it to their house. Come on, somebody. My whole point is, is that when the food's good, you can't keep people out. If your presence is there and God's presence is there, especially in the miracle month of May, your business is going to be better. Your marriage is going to be better. And you'll just enjoy your life. But you got to stay planted. You got to stay planted. Yeah. Psalms 92, verse 13, it says, those who are planted, shout at all campuses, what? Those who are planted. where in the online, at the mall. Planted where? One more time. I can't hear you in Ferguson. What? In the, they shall flourish in the courts of God. I want to put this guy on the spot real quick. You were in prison. Come here real quick. You come here. Just get up on stage. I got a guy here, and he won't mind telling this story. There's a guy that started coming to our church, and, uh, and he, was in, he was in prison. He, he did some things, whatever all, and he went to jail. And when he was in jail, they actually, he actually started a business in jail, and he started selling cell phones in jail. How many of y'all know this is another problem? Which now, when you're selling cell phones in jail, entrepreneurial is his deal. So he starts selling, uh, 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 come over here, this camera, I want to see everyone. So he starts selling these, and, and they, they, he had them like underneath the concrete, he invented a thing, and he would sell them. How much did he sell the cell phones for? About 3000 About 3000 a month. So he's making tons of dough in jail, and then somebody in jail told on him. And so then they put him in solitary confinement, and he couldn't, he just totally alone, in prison, and all they threw in there for three months, which they threw him, first of all, day one, a Bible, and food. And since he had nothing to do, he started reading the Bible, and he started memorizing the Bible, and then he started changing his life. And then three months later, they let him out, and now he owns the biggest generator company in all of Florida, and is one of our greatest donors. Don't you tell me what God can't do, but I can promise you today, he's glad he's in the house. He's glad he has the presence of God and the power of God. Come on, give it up for my brother from another mother. Somebody ought to give God praise today. That's why I started a church in Florida. That's why I started a church in Ferguson, and you have the ability to start a church in Fairview Heights, Illinois. Come on, give him praise today. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's all kinds of fruit in all the, the, the churches. There at Sunset Hill City, there's a guy there by the name of uh, Berta, Berta Electric. And, and I watched Tim, Berta, and Tracy raise their little kids at church. I've been doing this for 18 years. And for 18 years, I've watched them raise their kids in church. They were there all the time. When Tracy got breast cancer and they thought she was going to die, I said, oh, Tracy, you're at the right church to have breast cancer. Out of all the churches you could have been at, 
Thank God you were this one. Because we don't let people die of cancer at our church because the Bible said with long life he'll satisfy you and show your salvation. He sent his word that healed them and delivered them from all their destruction. Isaiah 53, 5 says he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. By his stripes we are healed. So this is the right place. Because we don't, we don't get scared of the C word. We throw the J word on it. And then God healed her of breast cancer, okay? Then, then they took little Rocky. Her name's Raquel. And they raised little Rocky. When Rocky's like 13, she's leading praise and worship at Sunset Hills at 13. Then she starts working through life and, and serving. And then she marries a dude at our church that was in the you know, YA together. And then he becomes a great medical salesperson. I don't know what he does, but it's legalized drugs that he sells. Unlike some of the people in our church. Come on, somebody. And so he, was, he did all that, and then they got married. Now she's pregnant. They're getting ready to have a baby. Their other daughter, Rachel, married another guy at our church, and, and they got pregnant. And, and, and she, she had a baby, and now they're pregnant again because apparently they're having too much fun staying home, watching online. <laughs> but I watched, and I can tell you at every campus, people that remained planted and their life turned out good. Then I can tell you a lot of people who didn't. I don't have to go to church. I don't think it takes all that. I mean, I'm really busy. It's just, just, just me and God. First of all, that's grammatically incorrect. It's, it's you and God, right? Or whatever. It's just, it's, just, it's just me and God. We're just out. And it's just me and Jesus got our own thing going. No, you don't. Because Jesus will not take you outside of his word. And so Jesus is telling you, let's read it again. Those who are planted, not at the lake. Got quiet here in Florida. I swear to God, there's people still here. I promise you, there are people still in the building. You know, the worst thing that could happen to you is maybe that you get money. You said, but you could have fooled me. It is because sometimes if you can handle money and money doesn't handle you, and it doesn't take you away from God. I've watched people get money, and they have a wonderful wife, help them go through college, raise the kids, and now they got money, and they're looking to trade up. You can't trade your wife up. Come on, ladies, start to say amen right here, right now. <laughs> Nicole told me, she said, it's till death to us part. That means if you leave me, you're going to die. <laughs> I'm scared. I can't leave. Come on, somebody. You understand? I say, I don't want to die. No, I don't want to die. But you, you, I'm just telling you, real life stories, if you remain planted, one more time, those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. So if you want to flourish in your life, raise your hand. If you want to do better, you want to have a successful life, get planted. When Nicole and I got married, she had a seven-year-old son. I never changed a diaper. He was old enough to take out the trash. I don't know why God blessed me so much more than he does you. He just did. And the seven-year-old kid, we just kept taking him to church. He was running puppets. He was going to church. He was working at church. He was loving at church. And he loved the church so much that he built a church. Today, when I pulled into Florida and I saw the flags and I saw everything, he's on vacation, but he built a great church. Come on, somebody. He, 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 he's faithful to the house of God. Then he married a pretty girl, which gave me a pretty little grandson. And that little dude will come at you. He, we're raising him in church. I'm telling you, if you want success in life, go to church. Be in church. Work in church. Praise God in church. Give him praise today in this house. Hey! I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. Look at your neighbor and say, he's preaching good today. Look back at him and say, but I do want some French toast. I don't, I don't know. Benny's might UPS it to you. I don't know. Go to Cracker Barrel and pray God does a miracle. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 26. It said, how is it then, brethren, whenever you come together, shout it, What? Come together. Come on, all campuses at one time. What? Come together. Each of you have a psalm and a teaching on his tongue. So when we come together and we meet people. So, you know, at any campus this weekend, it's, it's a weekend where we go into small groups. And at all the hallways, there's this little piece of paper. I asked for this one right before I went up. I said, what's it look like in West Palm Beach? So these are groups. You can sign up for it at any hallway. And there's groups for families. Groups for men, groups for women. There's a group that goes to Planet Fitness and works out together. That not, might be your thing, but it might be. They're different in all states. Uh, here in Florida, there's a group that meets at 1 o'clock on Sundays and goes to various restaurants. 
that's a group for me. Raise your hand if you're in that. I want in that group. I want in that group. And, and, and then you could obviously, you know, if you really want to take care of yourself, you'd go to the various restaurants, and then you could stand up to go to Planet Fitness. <laughs> Some of you are not going for it. You're like, I'm into fitness. I'm into fitting all this key lime pie in my mouth. That's the fitting I'm fitting to do. But these groups, what it does is it puts you in contact with other people because you're only as sick as your secrets. So when you do life alone, you don't do it at church with people of church, you can't come together and give each other a talk, a psalm. And, and God wants to announce, I don't know if you know this, but in the Bible they talk about these trumpets. In fact, Jesus is going to come back someday, which is going to be really, really cool. Like Fox News is going to cover it, CNN, Newsmax, everybody. It'll be on TikTok, I promise you, everywhere. And it says that Jesus is going to split the eastern sky, true story, and he's going to come back and there's going to be a trumpet sound. And Jesus is going to come back with his long, lanky Galilean legs on a white stallion with a sword coming out of his mouth that says faithful and true with a bloody vest. And he's coming back to deliver you from everything that is happening in the world because you think it's bad now. I'm scared of, of this. I'm scared of the monkey pox. I'm scared of whatever. They're going to scare the heck out of you for the rest of your life until you realize I ain't scared. Because if you kill me, I get to go to heaven? Shoot me, please. But there's, there's trumpets in the Bible. In, in Numbers 31, verse 6, it says, Then Moses sent them to war with these holy articles and the signal trumpets in his hand there is this trumpet where god is blowing where he calls you into gathering gathering is important we do it through text we do it through social media we say hey saturday live at five six at royal palm and we we try to announce to you Go to church. You, you really shouldn't have to try to do that, really, though. But it's been going on for a long time. I'm not just griping. But I think you should have your own alarm clock to go. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Yeah, so uh, no, Numbers 10, if you back up verse 2, it says, Make two silver trumpets for yourself, and you shall make them of hammered work, and you shall use them for calling the congregation. Calling them to congregate. Numbers 10, verse 9, remember before the Lord your God, and you will be saved from your enemies. So, so when we go to church, that enemy of cancer that tried to kill Tracy Berta, and I've got hundreds of people who've been healed of cancer in our church, that enemy can't stand when you're in the presence of God, we said our point one, and we have the power of God. The Bible said, let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. So when you come in, you think you're just going to church and singing a song. You're not singing a song. Hell is trembling and disease is, is becoming in, uh, 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 inactive in your life. And you're, you just get recalibrated for the whole week when you are in assembly. Now, now, point number four is assembly. I'll put it on the screen. Assembly, assembly, assembly. There's a difference between gathering and assembly. So what if I told you today... Uh, it's going to make some people mad because I'm going to use a Ford truck. I got a new Ford. I don't, this is not true, but I, I, I got a new Ford truck. It's a dually. It's diesel because I wanted to pay $9 for fuel. So um, come into my garage, and I want to show you my new truck. So you and I walk into my garage, and, and when they open up the garage door, there's tires over here, and engines over here, or transmissions over here, seats over here, front windshields over there, and you're like, this is your new 2022 Ford truck? I'm like, yeah. They go, it's, it's not assembled. But I say, yeah, but it's gathered. It's gathered. It's all here. And, and then you would say to me, but you know you're not going anywhere. Because you're gathered, but you're not assembled. So, so we talked about gathering, which is important, but now I want to take a little step further and say it's not just gathering, but it's assembled. Church, there's some assembly required. Now, not to say that you've got to be every service or every Sunday, but what is happening now is the enemy, the devil, which we all agreed is real. You also agree that maybe you were married to one of the relatives at one point, or maybe still. We agreed on those terms. 
That devil is trying to always distract you and try to get you out of the presence of God because the power of God's there to make your life better. Now, I want to say, I'm not saying this for me, church attendance. Our church is full of all campuses. I can't even get to all of them. We've got so many churches. This isn't for me. This is for you. I've tested this. I've walked this out. My daughter, this last week, we were up in a, we did a bunch of stuff um, with Joel Osteen in New York, and she was with us, and then we, we, we did a bunch of stuff, and I forget where we went. We flew back to St. Louis and worked and did a bunch of TV. Then we flew to South Carolina on Friday and we preached and we were leaving. She said, I want to stay here at this church because they're having church tonight. Now this girl's 18 years old and she wants to go to church on a Friday night. I'm just, I'm not here to brag on you, brag on me. I'm just here to impress you with the fact that this works. So raise your kids in church. He act just like his daddy. You know this little joker need to go to church. And you got to go to church when you don't feel like it because if you don't teach and train your children to go to church, they're not going to know God. They're going to be confused about who they are and whose they are. And now even what they are. You were created in the image and the likeness of God. By the way, you're the right color. <laughs> Some people say this is black people. There aren't really no black people. There's a, there's a darker group of people there's a lighter group of people and the enemy is so prejudiced and tries to make you feel so bad about yourself that because i I, I pastor the biggest african-american church in st louis so i understand a lot a lot about what is going on in the world and so some of my spiritual children who i've raised since i held them and i dedicated them when they were born and now they're 18 or 19 years old i noticed that these kids are confused about who they are when the world tries to tell them you're not black enough you're not tan enough you're not thick enough they're like i know exactly who i am i'm an overcoming child of the most high god and my skin is this color because god created me that color and if you were to cut me i would bleed red just like your beard who in the world you been talking to i've been talking to jesus i'm here to tell you raise your kids in church Send them to Rev Camp. Send them to Kids Camp. And then you bring them to church. I said, bring them. Assemble them. You're the right color. Some of you are too white. I am, so I spray tan. And try not to be orange, right? Hebrews 10, 25. Here's the scripture for that. In the New Testament, it says, not forsaking the uh, assembling of ourselves to gather as the manner of some, but exhorting one another. goes on to say, as the evil day approaches, do it all the more. So we need to not forsake assembling. Everybody shout, assembling. assembling. Ourselves together as the manner of some. So the manner of some is or, or, or the way it is now in culture. I'll go to church when I feel like it. Don't feel like it. I didn't want, I, I, to, to, to maintain my weight within reason, I have to have a minimum of 10,000 steps a day. So I have an app on my phone, and so to get 10,000 steps a day, you got to start stepping early. So I'm at 4,187 steps today because I went out and walked and, and did some to try to get myself down the road. But if I'm like, I'm just not going to get out of bed, I didn't want to get out of bed. I sure didn't want to walk. Especially as you get older, it takes a while for stuff to lubricate. You know what I'm saying? I'm just talking to real right now. How many of y'all got stuff hurt you didn't even know you owned? You're like, I didn't even know that was there. And so I, I, I track and I measure my steps. May I tell you that you have to measure your steps because someday, not to depress anybody, but you're going to die. And when you die, you're either going to go to heaven or you're going to go to hell. Now, may, now may I make this clear? You do not go to heaven because you go to church. You go to heaven because you receive Jesus. But your life will be hell on earth if you don't hang out with Jesus because his presence and his power removes burdens and destroys yokes. Plus, when, go ahead, give God praise. Florida's getting this right now, man. Florida's like, hurry up, I want to go to Benny. Hey, hey, if we clap, he'll shut up. So you have got to get a hold of this because you're more apt to do better When you're around better. Does that make sense? And look around you right now at every campus. You're around better. We raise champions here. It's really cool because you'll see a doctor sitting next to a a guy that went to prison. You'll see an attorney sitting next to a guy who went to prison. And the guy will tell him, this is what you're going to experience when you go. (laughs) I'm just kidding. 
I didn't mean it. So our church is very diverse. And I'm here to tell you, look at me, you belong here. You belong here. We're glad you're here. It's why I get up. It's why I want to I wanna preach. Hosea 2, 23. It says, then I will say to those people who were not my people, you are my people. And they will say, you are my God. This is God speaking of the Jewish people that, that they didn't feel like they were a people. And God said, I'm going to make you a people and tell everybody you're my people. And I'm here to tell you right now that we have been adopted in by the Yeshua, by Jesus himself. And now we were a people that didn't feel like we were anybody. And God took nobodies and made them somebodies. And now he's wanting everybody to tell everybody that they can receive the same thing from Jesus. Psalm 69, verse 9. I didn't have this in my sermon last night. This is because of Pastor Phil. Pastor Phil sent me this at Weldon. Psalm 69, verse 9. He said, for zeal for your house has consumed me. And the reproaches of those who reproach you have fallen on me. A zeal for the house of God. In other words, God's saying, hey, I, I want you to think about my house. It, it, you might not be this way, but how many of y'all had a grandma or a mom or somebody in your family that they were all about church? Raise your hand. Come on, every campus, wave it at me. I want to see you at Earth City. Everywhere. So how many of y'all ever, my grandmother, she knew on Friday, she said, oh, we're getting ready to go to church on Sunday. And so she'd take out her dress on Saturday now, and she would lay out the dress on the bed. Remember this right here? And then she would lay out the hat. If you really love the Lord, you got a hat. And she'd lay the hat over here, and she'd lay her high heels over there. And then there was this thing that I didn't know until later. Basically, it was old type of spanks. I was like, what is that thing over there, you know? And that thing over there was grandma would put all that stuff on, and then she would put on the dress. Come on, somebody. And then she'd put on the hat, and then she'd walk into church, and she'd be like, praise the Lord. God is good all the time. And And they would sing the songs. They had a hymnal. Remember the hymnal? And they'd open up the hymnal to page 1999. We're going to 379, and we're singing all these songs. The blood that Jesus shed. You learn all the verses. And then you'd be jacking around at church. Anybody ever mess around at church? And maybe your mama just take the book and pop, pop, get, You ain't never lived till that happened. I had to act right before I got right because my dad... He didn't want me to go to hell, so he beat it out of me. But, but the church is kind of like the ark. There's a story in the Bible, true story. They had never seen rain. Never in their lives have seen rain. They, they don't even know what rain is, no reference. It's like, like monkeypox to talk about now. How many of you have never heard of monkeypox until they started scaring you about it the other day? Like, monkeypox? I don't want the monkeypox. If you haven't been watching the news, good for you. But this thing out now, they're like, you're going to get the monkeypox. Like, like warts all over. We're all going to die of the monkeypox. Scare you one more time. Try to get you home so you don't grab about the gas. So, so we never heard of rain. And this guy says, Noah says, God spoke to me and said, uh, I'm going to save two giraffes. And they can multiply. This is a male and a female. That's how that happens, by the way. I know Calvin Klein's confusing you about that, but it's not. And... and I feel like there's political correctness or that was a political statement you're sitting on me right now. I'm just here to tell you that God made Adam and he made Eve and he said be fruitful and multiply and that's how that happens. So if you try to do it on your own life, you can do that in a lab, then you got to make your own lab. This whole thing didn't just create by like a big bam. You can't go to a junkyard, set off a bomb and expect to get a new truck assembled. So God created you in his image and his likeness. And we love all people, but I just want to be sure that you understand only God can create life and breathe his pneuma into you. And God created you for a purpose, and he created his church for a purpose. Does that make sense to you? So now Noah, he said, two giraffes, two bears, two dogs, two parrots. I don't even know why he did this. Two snakes. Could have done without that. People tell me, like, that snake's not poisonous. It can't hurt you. I'm like, any snake can hurt me because I don't want to die of a heart attack. They all scare me. So, so God creates all this in this ark, and it was a form of the church, the local church, where God would actually change people's lives. So church is important. It's very important. 
assembly is very important. If you're going to get open heart surgery, don't try to do it online. Be like, hey, Nicole, let's watch some YouTube videos. Get some whiskey and a knife. How many of y'all know that's not going to work? Even if it's Tennessee whiskey. Certain things you want to assemble for. And then you want a good pastor. I'm thinking today, I was thinking about my daughter up in, she was at Seacoast Church. She does gigs for them at Seacoast. It's a great church um, in South Carolina. I think there's a picture of her and the pastor there. And this little pastor, he's about, he's not very tall. He's got his little Jeep cup. Not very cool. And he prides himself in not being cool. He always says, hey, I'm in shape. Rounds is shape. But he built this great church called Seacoast, and they're having church up there today, and thousands of people go to Seacoast, and he just loves Ashton, and he raises up worship leaders. In fact, one of the greatest worship leaders in America right now that's that's selling millions of albums is a guy named Brandon Lake. And Brandon Lake, uh, there's a picture of Brandon. Brandon's pastor is that little short guy with Jeep cup. So Brandon looks way different. But for years, for almost 20 years, he told Brandon, you're going to be great, Brandon. You're going to sing songs around the world from Seacoast. And then he wrote a song that you guys sing. You're too good to not believe. You're too good to not believe. I've seen cancer disappear. I've seen broken families here. And don't you tell me he can't do it. Don't you tell me. And he was ta- writing this church. He was writing this song at his church about his church. So his ministry, his success was born out of the local church. Your happiness comes out of the local church assembly. Your sanity, your mental health. You might, you might not believe this, but I was at church one day and my dad prayed for a guy and he didn't have a neck. His head is sitting on his shoulders. And I was only about eight or nine years old. But about three days into this meeting, all of a sudden, this, this church that we were at, everybody had seen this guy for like, he went to church for 20 years, and he had no neck. And God miraculously grew him. I saw it with these two eyes. Grew him a neck, and he was doing this. And the place went buck wild. People were screaming. The whole town went crazy. The next night, they had the windows open, and my dad was preaching to people at the outside because you know what? Miracles happen at church. Breakthrough happens at church. Healing happens in church. You're in church, by the way, and it's Miracle May. The church. He takes guys in prison and makes millionaires out of them. There's a woman in our church. She was a hooker. And uh, she got pregnant. And she was going to abort the child. And then there's another woman at our church. Her name's Bridget. And Bridget started a company called Thrive. And and Thrive, she started. I know I'm kind of going long right now, but I don't care. You're at church. You need to be at church. You've missed some church, so I'm going to get you loaded up today at church. So I only have one service to do here. I got the right amount of Red Bull in me. You're just screwed. So so Bridget Bridget has no money, but she has a dream to help girls that are going to get abortions. So she goes into the inner city neighborhoods and she stands in front of Planned Parenthood and she watches all these girls go in to get abortions. So then she finds out that she can get a loan on her house and she goes and buys a sprinter van, but she wants it to be a Mercedes sprinter van because she thinks that the girls have never been in like a limo sprinter van. So she parked her limo sprinter van on the outside of Planned Parenthood in St. Louis and put a wrap on the van that said Planned Parenthood. And as the little girls were going in to get an abortion in St. Louis, she would say, if you guys come in here, I want to talk to you about your options before you go in there. You can go in there, but she would go in there and she would to talk those girls out of getting an abortion and she saved thousands of kids one of those kids that she saved was the hooker lady this lady saved her child now the little kid a few weeks ago in a video testimony just received a scholarship to go on a full ride because our church paid for it because he was saved in a sprinter van in st louis somebody ought to shout amen god took his mom who had a past that was checkered. And what I love about her is she's not afraid to share her story. And you look at her, you know, she's not that because you're not what you did, you're what you do. And if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. And I've never been so proud of any woman in my life to keep the kid. Somebody ought to give God praise today and to drive abortion out of our state. Missouri was the first one to get rid of it. 
Now, I want to say this. I love people that had an abortion. God's not mad at you. If you had an abortion, you're forgiven. But we need to not go do that. The church does that. Church takes people who are broken, puts them back together. Church takes people that medicine can help, but it doesn't solve it. Medicine is so good. I love medicine. I love doctors. People at our church, I, had a, I needed a, um, I don't know, the other day, uh, what do you call it, antibiotic. And so I had an issue that was going off my arm. And so the doctors at the church, a, a man and a woman, I forget their names, but, uh, huh? I don't even know. I can't even say what she says. It's a kind of interesting name. And so, uh, and so they met me in the back. I went off the stage at Sunset Hills. I went to go preach at our city. They examined me. They checked me. And then they said, you need an antibiotic. So then when I went to preach at our city, I came back. They had went to Walgreens, got the antibiotics. By the next service, they threw the antibiotic in, in me. I didn't even have a copay. Come on, somebody. I love that church. I didn't have to wait a lot. I got my antibiotic. Yeah. You can get everything in our church. We got crack dealers. Former crack dealers. It is cool at our church. It's, uh, people come to the altar and leave crack, put it in the offering, put marijuana in the offering because they realize God delivers. So uh, thank God we have honest staff because the people could go to jail at our church just for selling the paraphernalia. Y'all getting quiet. These are true stories. Cigarettes, lottery tickets, you name it, we get it in the offering. I like a church like that. I like a church that smells a little bit like... Gucci and a little bit like cigarettes. That's a healthy church right there. You know, you're like, oh, yeah, somebody get delivered in here today. Yeah. Uh-huh. I smell Chanel number five and marijuana. It's real. The church. What I'm doing right now is called spiritual parenting to you, and I'm done. A church without spiritual parenting and authority is an orphanage. You need a dad to tell you, Ashton, I love you, but you're not going to do that. When Austin was little, he was seven. He had his big people teeth, his little people teeth. And his physical, biological dad was telling him one thing, and I was telling him, you're not going to do that, homie. And I blessed him, and I loved him. Well, like, we ain't doing that. His dad said, we're going to play ball. You're the greatest ball player in the world. Look at you. You're unbelievable. And I'd say, Austin, your dad, he's a great guy. But I need you to learn something else. Because what if you're not the greatest ball player? Which, by the way, I was right. (laughs) He's good. But now he's living his dream. Because he loved ball so much. Now all the Cardinals come talk to him. They were wanting him to be the chaplain of the Cardinals since he's down here in Jupiter and they train and they do it up there. So the thing that he wanted to do, because he gave his life to God, he gets to do it long term and he gets to get people saved, tell them about the church and bring them to church. And and then the great part is, is his dad, who was going to hell, came here to his church that he helped build in Florida. He's sitting on the front row at vacation. Austin said, if there's anybody in here that want to receive the Lord Jesus as their Savior, raise your hand. He called me and said, Papa... Dad raised his hand, and then Gina raised her hand, and then my stepbrother raised his hand, and then my stepsister raised his hand. So as a result of Austin going to church and him loving Jesus, now his dad gets to go to heaven. His dad posts every time Austin preaches. He puts it on Facebook. My son's a preacher. He's a hell of a preacher. He's saved. He's just still working on it. You know what I'm saying? So he's dropping the the F-bomb. He's doing all kinds of stuff. But on Facebook, he knows that's my son in whom I'm well pleased. I'm here to tell you the answer is Jesus. The answer is his church. Give your heart to Jesus. Give your life to Jesus. Bring your kids to Jesus. Whatever you do, I'm telling you, the church is the answer. Give God praise today.